Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Comic Art Live. John Suntra is here from the Word Balloon Podcast. It's going to be a great day of interviews with uh, great creators, and I'm about to introduce one of them for you right now. This is a guy who has certainly made his mark at both uh, DC and Marvel over the years. I'm really excited to talk to him about uh, where his career has been and where his career is going. Please welcome Mike McCone, everybody. Hey, how's it going? How's it Good, going? man. It's a pleasure. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. It's been a long time. I, we've met very briefly at cons, but I, I'm, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to speak at length to you. This is a long time coming for me. Well, it's it's good to be here. I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to have to apologize because the gardeners have just arrived, and I can <laughs> <laughs> I can hear them blowing leaves or something. So it's, all right, no problem. It's, it's not a bowel problem. It's it's gardeners outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I can't hear it right now, at least. Okay, so, good. so good. yeah, don't don't be freaked. Hey, I, don't kid yourself. Amazon likely will buzz my door at some <laughs> point within the hour, so I'm just kind of counting on it. But, okay. um, but hey, Mike, I want to. I mean, I'll, I'll get the boring part out of the way, but I do want to know um, what inspired you to get into comics, and how how did you break in? Oh my goodness, what inspired me? Um, I just, I love comics when I was a kid. Really love comics when I was a kid. And I, I could draw a little bit. I was a little bit better than my friends, just a teeny bit. So it was a, it was a way to kind of get attention. Um, and uh, I, I come from um, a, a small mining town just outside Newcastle in England. And it's, it's a lot of heavy industry, a lot of blue collar jobs, steel, steel workers and shipbuilding and coal miners. So any excuse not to do any of that. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> and I, I took my portfolio to a convention in London, and uh, Dick Giordano, who was uh, editor in chief at DC at the time, this was in 1988. Uh, wow! Took a, took a look at it, um, said I could probably get work, and a couple of weeks later, Andy Helfer called and told me he needed an issue of Justice League drawing, and uh, I didn't have to think on it too long. <laughs> That's outstanding, man. So yeah, that was uh, the McGiffin Dematis era. Yeah, Maguire had just left. That's why they were looking for um, looking wow. a penciler to draw an issue. Um, and uh, Andy Helfer was was uh, a mensch, as he would say. Um, and he kept me in work for a couple of years uh, until I kind of found my feet and started getting offers elsewhere. But um, yeah, right place at the right time, really. That's awesome. Who were your inspirations? Because, I mean, especially stepping into Justice League International and Kevin Maguire, you know, that was a beyond the action and stuff. The facial stuff was very expressive. And, I, you know, I wonder if, you know, you if if Andy wanted you to follow in that vein or was he happy with, you know, what you were doing? Um, he didn't give me a great deal of direction. Uh, he, he was kind of notorious for for being creator friendly. Um so he he didn't push me in that direction, but Kevin Kevin was so good at that stuff, and and the stories were built around the the interaction between the characters that it, it just I'm not saying I was anywhere near good enough to uh, to emulate what Kevin was doing, but uh, it was certainly something to uh, to to go for. Um, I mean, to this day, I'm still struck every time I see Kevin posting something on Twitter or or whatever how good he is at that that stuff. It's funny, just a, a few weeks ago, we had a bit of a uh, Boahaha reunion. Uh, as, as I call him, the J.D. Salinger of comics, uh, <laughs> Keith Giffen. You know exactly what I'm talking about right away. Yeah, he didn't show up, but I had, uh, I had, Mark, on, I had Mark on and Kevin, and they had, they had great memories and stuff. Now, you know, do you mostly work by full script, or have there been opportunities where it has been more of a, a, a pure collaboration? Well, I, I stopped drawing interiors about five five or six years ago now. Um, and one of the reasons I stopped was because comics had kind of moved to full script and it just wasn't as much fun anymore. Sure. Um, most, most of my uh, kind of interiors career was, was spent uh, Marvel style, uh, where you'd get a, a, a very detailed plot outline and um, kind of have, have more to do with the, um, the telling of the story, um, which isn't to say that full script doesn't, doesn't demand those those kind of um, uh, skills, but it, it, it just seemed less involved somehow when you're when you're working from a full script, um, and it just uh, yeah, it was time time to not do it anymore. <laughs> no, I understand that. I am going to ask you a few questions about that era it's because uh, you you're so accomplished and you did so many amazing things. Um, before we get to like 
the uh, the hot period that I saw you really in the 2000s. Tell me about, um, because you were working through the boom and the bust yeah. of the 90s. And I'm really interested, like, how that high and low period impacted you. It didn't, um, uh, to be honest. Um, it, it's weird. Because we've been in, in lockdown for the last nine months, it sure. really felt like my life was in uh, all the way through the 90s uh, and the early 2000s, where uh, pretty much every hour of the day was spent drawing comics at home. Uh, there's not a lot of conventions in England then or now. Sure. Um, so um, it, it just, it that period just didn't affect me at all. I wasn't aware of it. It was pre-internet. Um, so I wasn't aware there was a boom and <laughs> until there was a bust. And I didn't realize there was a bust until I, I got a letter from Marvel Comics saying they were going uh, into bankruptcy. Um, and I, I fortunately, I kept getting work. Um, I had very little interaction with any other creators. Um, and the only interaction I had with editorial was with the editors I was working for. Um, so it kind of just passed me by. I was in my own little bubble in, in, uh, in England. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I wish I had more stories to tell. <laughs> no, but even to be honest, that's, that's a great and B that's a different answer <laughs> than I think I normally get. So that's fantastic. Um, you did, you know, you did so much with Jeff Johns over the years of so Teen Titans and, and certainly, uh, into the, the big Green Lantern saga with the Red Lanterns and such and everything. Um, I want to talk about the Titans for a second, just because, uh, I, I really love that run. And, um, so did you, did you design modern look Connor Kent, uh, you know, in terms of the t-shirt and jeans and, and that thing, or like, what exactly was your, uh, involvement in terms of, you know, Connor's look or creation? Um, yeah, they wanted a new look for him, and I turned in a bunch of different designs that were kind of uh, your standard superhero stuff. And and somebody along the way, I don't know if it was me or Jeff, uh, said, "Why don't we just put him in a t-shirt?" And I was I was like, "Well, that that's easier for me to draw <laughs> because the, the the designs I was turning in had had the S symbol on the shoulders and okay. kind of piping everywhere and um, I, I honestly can't remember whose idea it was at this point. I've, I've got a terrible memory anyway. Uh, so asking me to remember something from 20 years ago, I, I could tell you a fascinating story, but there's no guarantee it would be true. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great era of the Titans, and I really oh, it brought me back to the book hard, and uh, I really did appreciate those stories. Also, the uh, the future story of them as adults, I, one of my favorites as well. And and again, just slight slight alterations on the designs because. These are legacy heroes now wearing the costumes and taking the mantle. Well, I've, I've done quite a, well, I did do quite a bit of that kind of redesign. I did a, a book called Big Town at Marvel, which was kind of the future version of the characters. I did Exiles for a couple of years, where every, every issue I would change the costumes. I want to talk about Exiles, absolutely. Yes, it did. I, I, Jim yeah. Calciori was drawing uh, uh, the issues that I wasn't drawing, and I would drive him crazy because I'd never tell him I was changing the costumes. Um, and Jim's one of my best friends, so it was it was uh, more than amusing to to get him irate as possible. That's cool. And of course, you're working with Judd Winnick on Exiles, yeah. and Judd, you know, also uh, a great cartoonist as well as a writer as well. Oh, I was right. certainly seeing that with his current work, with uh -huh. uh, with his kids' books, Hilo and stuff. Yeah. So, as as an artist that also wrote, you know, how was it was it different getting you know how, did you work Marvel style then with Judd in terms of Exiles? No, I think it was, I think it was, I would call it, I guess, full script, but the, the panel descriptions, as I remember, were very brief. Um, so it's, a, it's, there was kind of a transition period where it would be plots, but with page numbers. Um, and to be honest, one of the first things I did when I got plots like that was take out the page numbers. Um, but Judd is such a good cartoonist that he he understands pacing and he had the beats down anyway, so it wasn't a problem. Um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun working for him. He's an endlessly creative. Um, I think we we did the book together for a couple of years, and and just the the amount of uh, of, of material he created was was really impressive. That's awesome. Are you are you drawing stuff for us today that uh, we're going to be? Uh... 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm not sure what yet. Um, oh, okay. I combo set up. I think I might do a Hulk. Um, oh, fantastic. And uh, I think we're going to raffle it um, for uh, Tatiana's, um, Tatiana's my, uh, my art rep. Yes. And, if, if people sign up to her uh, her mailing list, then they'll get a chance to win it. Um, so, I, I, do you want me to start drawing now? Is that cool? If if you want, absolutely, man. Are you are you able to uh, you know pat your head and rub your belly at the same time and uh, talk to us while you're drawing? <laughs> well, I, I I do a lot of conventions, so it's a, it's a skill that I've learned to acquire. Um, the 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 yabbering as I draw. Um, I'm gonna make sure everything's turned off. So all good, buddy. <laughs> oh, we got the camera. Yeah, that's great. We can see you drawing, so that's fantastic. Lovely. There are uh, people that are making comments, and I guess uh, I want to throw those out there because uh, they are inspiring some uh, excellent, uh, I think, discussion that we can do. John Beatty joining us. Hey, it's great to see John Beatty, the fine anchor. Uh, Mike McCone was one one pencil. I never got to ink, but I always wanted to, and he's saying hello. Well, hello, John. John is, um, I mean, he's he's a legend. He's one of uh, the best. Well, uh, one of the very best. I, I, if I live to be a thousand, I'll never be able to wink like uh, like John Beatty does. That's um, awesome. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I've had the pleasure. We hung out at uh, Salt Lake City with Mike Sek and I had a lot of fun. So Dre, uh, Dre uh, Mellon says, uh, shout out from down under. Very nice. <laughs> hey, Dre. Uh, How about I that? Dre, Dre's in Brazil. Um, Oh, sorry, Dre. I, th I thought you meant someone else. Dre's, uh, Dre's a great guy. He's in uh, Melbourne. Oh, um, cool, man. Um, That's awesome. Doesn't it suck, Mike? I mean, honestly, we, we, we talk about these other countries and stuff, and it's like, <sighs> wouldn't it be nice to travel? And I'm just so <laughs> bummed right now that, uh, you know, we got to stay in our metropolitan areas. What part of uh, the states are you in right now? I'm in Portland, Oregon. Which oh, fantastic. Is, uh, it's comic book law that every... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who works in comics eventually has to live in Portland, Oregon, for at least a little while. Um, so we're, we're going through rainy season now. It's, it's rained for about 10 days. Um, so even if I wanted to go outside, I'm not sure I would. I understand, man. Um, Don McPherson, great question, and wants me to make sure that I remember to discuss uh, your phenomenal work on Superman with Jeff Loeb. I bought two pages from his first issue from him at San Diego years ago, either 2000 or 2003, he says. I hope you got a good price. <laughs> How was that run on uh, on Superman? Honestly, I, I I loved writing it, and I, I loved uh, Loeb's writing, and I'm sure I I'm sure I read your issues. Well, I think I I drew I only drew three issues, and I was really just warming up for uh, Ed McGuinness. Okay. Um, but it it was fun. I, I it's just one of those periods where I don't have a lot of memory of. You know, okay. When you were drawn on a monthly schedule, <laughs> um, it's 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 just so. It's just such a crazy thing to do to draw 12, 14, 16 hours a day, um, that that you're literally your nose is to the paper, uh, all of your waking hours, and and you come out the other end of it. And it's it's. I don't know if you've ever driven anywhere, and then when you get to your destination, you think, "Well, I've got no recollection of how I did that." <laughs> 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 That's what a lot of comics feel like to me. Well, um, I'm going to keep letting people do uh, shout outs of your stuff. Uh, booming booming Music Scene says, I became a fan of Mike with the Teen Titans Run. Very beautiful arc. And uh, uh, Chad, if you want to go back to the beginning there, I think Ken Lomas uh, has a great first comment. The first book I remember seeing McCone's art in was here's a big event book, The Final Night, The Crossover, Parallax, oh, great issue. Yeah, Ron Mars. Yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah. That was so, um, yeah. Tell us about that, because again, I mean, was that was that your first like big event that you were involved in? Ooh, I, I, mean, I, I know I'm making. I know I keep hitting the memory button with you, and you're like, oh. um, <laughs> I think so. I remember um, what I remember about that is that I think I'd gone to do some some work at a claim. I did six issues at a claim just after I bought my first apartment, and there was some crazy scheduling problem and I didn't work for about three months while they were getting scripts together and um, I think I went scurrying back to DC <laughs> with with mortgage payments looming and, and vowing never to work for anyone but the big two again 
That's outstanding. I'm well, pretty much stuck to that. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Well, let me let me ask about um, what you're doing uh, lately. Aren't you you're in, aren't you in the midst of a, a create your own th- project? I am. I've been I've been slowly kind of whittling away at it for about a year, and I'm I'm 33 whole pages into it, but um, it's taken so long. I just spent I just spent seven days on one page on on um one of one of the I guess the downfalls of not having an editor or anyone to to kind of crack the whip is that you'll just keep doing the same thing over and over again until and until you you get it right or or you you get it as perfect as you can make it um so each page on this thing has been taking me like a minimum of three days which is ridiculous um but with the i get one of the benefits of the pandemic is that i've uh, i've had a lot of downtime uh on any other given year i i do probably 20 25 conventions so that's a lot of travel days that um i'm not having to waste um, and spending that doing this creator own book understood i uh i'm want to point everyone as we said earlier that uh there is a giveaway that mike is offering if you uh, go to uh tda all capital letters rt tdartgallery.com actually it's uh just uh, lowercase i'm going to i'm going to copy this and uh make sure that uh, chad gets it and we will maybe put up a banner so people uh, can uh, go to uh, that site and uh, sign up for your newsletter, but also uh, let uh, people go in and uh, get in the drawing to uh, win some uh, great Mike McCone art. I think that's awesome, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I don't feel too bad about screwing it up if I'm giving it away for free. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate that. You know, you had a, you had a unique book in, in recent memory, reasonably recent memory, uh, <laughs> before you stopped doing uh, sequential art, and that was uh, Justice League United. Uh, the, the the Canadian team that yeah. uh, you worked with uh, and Jeff Lemire. Well, I, you know, honestly, I think it's a great idea. And isn't it interesting? I mean, obviously, you know, Marvel was hit to the idea of creating a Canadian team, you know, mm-hmm. a couple decades earlier and stuff. And I, I always thought that was kind of smart of if it was DiDio's idea or Jeff's. I don't even know how how the idea came up, but I, I think it was it was cool. And and I'm I'm sorry that it didn't have a longer run, but how was that, man? Well, the, the story I heard that the deal was at a convention in Des Moines and he cracked a joke about having a Justice League Des Moines. And then <laughs> <laughs> people took him seriously for whatever reason. <laughs> and, and, and then, uh, yeah, then uh, I got off at Justice League Canada and I, my first thought was what, what happens in Canada that warrants a superhero team? Um, because I, every time I've been to Canada, it's been the most pleasant, chill place you can imagine. Um, but uh, it was an opportunity to work with Jeff Lemire, who's who's wonderful and fantastic, and, and yeah. maybe the nicest person anyone could meet. Um, <laughs> he is very nice. Annoying. <laughs> but he's Canadian, <laughs> he's Canadian, so it's a sliding scale. <laughs> I, I'm hip, man. Exactly. Seriously, I've I've yet to meet an angry Canadian. I, I, I hope that's positive profiling saying that. It's <laughs> he might be a monster to other Canadians, but <laughs> but, but to the likes of us, he, he comes across very pleasant. Absolutely, man. That's hilarious. That's fantastic. Um, more great comments. Hey, Scott Dunbeer is uh, watching us. Uh, the great oh. editor and wants to say hello. So that's pretty cool. I, I Scott was one of the the, the first people. Uh, connected to comics that I ever spoke with. Um, I bought my first page of original art from uh, from Scott. He, the same convention that I, I talked to, I, to uh, Dick Giordano with, mm-hmm. uh, it's a show called UCAC in London, which used to be held every year. And Scott was an art dealer back then. And he would set up and uh, um, I bought a page of John Romita Jr. Uh, Spider-Man artwork for him for uh, four English pounds. <laughs> wow! Which, what is that in American dollars? Is that like twenty bucks like, or whatever? It was like six dollars. Six dollars. That's fantastic. And wow! It's, it's a non-costume page. It's just uh, Peter uh, in civilian dress. And I, I was at the show with um, with uh, like my best childhood friend, and 
he thought I was absolutely insane for spending four pounds <laughs> on a piece of paper. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Scott, Scott would have such good stuff um, at those shows. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he said hi. I've, uh, I haven't seen him for years and years and years. I, I've had him on the podcast. He's always fun. He's got a ton of stories, obviously. I, you know, I, I'm glad you mentioned Dick Giordano again because I feel like I missed an opportunity. Um, did you have much time beyond that that first meeting uh, working with Dick and talking to him over the years? No, no. That was the only time I ever spoke to him. Um, oh, wow. Uh, I guess a little addendum. The year, the year before that I spoke to him, I had taken samples to um, to the same convention to get okay. To get a critique, and I was standing in line to speak to him, and I was looking at the other people in line and looking at their portfolios, and I just I stepped out of line because I just didn't think I was as good as they were. Um, I knew I wasn't as good as they were, and they weren't getting jobs. <laughs> That's kind of what I wanted. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I missed the the first opportunity I had to speak to him because I just knew I wasn't good enough. But I went, I, I worked hard and went back the next year, and it worked out. But he was, I spoke to him for maybe five minutes, but he was um, incredibly generous, uh, incredibly um, uh, patient with this kind of tongue-tied kid. I was, I think I was 19 at the time. Um, and he, he could not have been sweeter. And, and as good as his word, he passed my information along to editorial. And uh, I mean, goodness knows what I'd be doing um, if, if he hadn't done that. That's awesome, man. Now you got the ball rolling. That's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, Dustin, I mean, <laughs> Dustin Pizarro has a nice uh, comment and uh, inspires some more uh, conversation. Uh, loved McCone's art uh, since X Men Unlimited number three, oh and of goodness. course your your Titans run, but most especially your Fantastic Four run. Beautiful art, indeed. You were working with uh, Straczynski back then. Let Let's loosely call it working with Straczynski. Fair um, enough. I was for for reasons that I that I forget. I'd moved to Spain. Uh, to the Pyrenees. I was living okay. on a sheep, I was wow. living, Yeah, I was living on a sheep farm in the Pyrenees. Jeez. Uh, no internet, no phone. Um, <laughs> so I had this kind of uh, this this basic uh, satellite phone that I would I'd have to walk like up into like up into the first <laughs> decent sized mountain in the Pyrenees called Pinga Montessa to, to call Brevort. Um, or Molly, his assistant, to get a script. Um, and then they, they would send it to Andy Lanning, who was inking uh -huh. at the time, and Andy would dictate the script to me uh, while I'm sitting on a mountain, my dog is chasing sheep. Um, and to this day, I've got no idea if, if that book was half written by Andy because <laughs> he's a writer himself, and I'm sure he might have done a little editorial. Uh, Interesting. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was no. inking it too. So wow. know, I'm sure those space armadas <laughs> might might have been reduced in number when Andy got Andy got his hands on them. That's very funny, man. Jeez. I uh I, yeah, and again, another really interesting period in the FF because it was during Civil War and they were all mad at each other and yeah. you know, kind of split up as well. And I, I always thought that was kind of I always like those kind of fish out of water stories. When it isn't just you know business as usual with a, with a book, and that I, I I appreciated that about that Civil War period. Why well, I, I had no idea what was going on because I, <laughs> I I I you know the only contact I had was the scripts I was getting. So I was like, why is the thing in France? He's, 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 <laughs> yeah, this, this French group of superheroes who are kind of a, a, a pastiche on the Justice League. Um, it was a bizarre. A, a bizarre, bizarre time. Um, it it almost seems like they lean on you to, uh, or or did it just happen where a lot of your work would require designs for you know, new heroes, new villains, new costumes, new you know variations of costumes? Certainly with Exiles. Um, I'm not sure if they leaned on me. I think I got a, I got into the habit of drawing team books. Which sure. No one in their same mind would would volunteer for. <laughs> um, even you know, uh, I just did so many of them, but I kind of enjoyed them too. You know, you don't get bored. I'm hip quite so easily. That's great, man. Well, and another great team book that you worked on, uh, Avengers Academy with Chris Gage, and created a lot of really cool characters. And it's ironic that you're drawing the Hulk 
because I've, I've heard you in other interviews refer to uh, the creation of metal. And I wanted uh, your shorthand of how you describe metal. I, I think he's basically uh, the, the red skull who, who's been in the gym. <laughs> Not that but, I endorse, you know, that, that kind of... Um, but Red Skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah Red Skull or, or anything he believes. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, in its simplicity, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's kind of what you're, what you're just, you know, kind of referring to. But, God, it's one of my favorite characters. And truly, I, I think it was the right look, the right color. I mean, you know, whatever. I, all I know is that I, I really... It was certainly one of the uh, young uh, wannabe Avengers that I certainly gravitated to right away. Well, thank you. Thank you. I think what I, I certainly wanted to do when I was designing the team is not have this uh, kind of Jackson Pollock-esque color explosion that you see on some teams. <laughs> so they're, they're pretty much all designed as, as their costumes have black and one other color. Um, and it just sure. it made it a little trickier to draw, but hopefully a little, <laughs> a little more, um, a, a little easier to follow than having... Yeah, I, I like everyone. I grew up reading the, the kind of George Perez Avengers, where it would just be a, a <laughs> kind of a mishmash of, uh, of a rainbow coming coming at you on the page. Um, <laughs> but that that creates stone problems because then you've got to make sure that when you're drawing it, that colors aren't touching each other. Characters, you know, who who have um, red on their costume have to be separated, and it's, it's just it's too much work. It's too much work. But also, I, I think, uh, again, I think you're beyond the spandex. You always have interesting ideas. And I think of another Avengers Academy uh, member, Vale, and the fact the way that, the way that you designed Vale. Well, that, that was just a practical solution to her powers. She, she can turn into a kind of different forms of gases. And that, that's tricky to draw. Um, sure. I guess it would be easier now. You could pull off some tricks in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Um or the most sophisticated coloring could could solve those problems, but having the the kind of um, uh, the linen wraps on spool and to suggest the shape of the gas forms, uh, it it just seemed like an obvious solution, and um, and it, it seemed to work. Uh, I'm just I'm sorry they killed off most of them. I understand that a lot of them were killed. They were. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Um, I. Uh, I want to point out as you're drawing your, and if people are just, you know, joining us midway through, they might see the crawl saying that uh, they can go to TDA art uh, or TD art uh, gallery.com mm -hmm. for originals and art purchases, but also this uh, sketch of the Hulk you're working on will also be a giveaway through mm -hmm. TD art with entries for newsletters and subscribing and uh, the convention shoppers. So uh, I definitely wanted to, Mention that again, and I'm sure I will again before we uh, we finish our conversation. But look at that man! Already, it's uh, clearly becoming the Hulk before our eyes with that great hair. <laughs> That's yeah. how my hair looks when I wake up in the morning. That's exactly how. And i I had to gre I had to grease up to uh, to do our uh, our conversation today. Hey, now, I mean that's that's between you and your maker. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get to the barber before uh, the state locks down on Monday. So, I, oh my goodness! I um here uh, more. I'm sorry. Please, if you, you had a comment. <laughs> well, I, I I need to go to the barber too. But um, there you go. When we were three months into this, I decided to cut my own hair, and I it, it was I, I I it was terrible. So I shaved my head. Um, really? It, it was the only sensible solution. Well, it's grown back, so that's good news. Well, <laughs> Jason Alvarez. Well, I didn't see how you looked, obviously. Jason Alvarez on Facebook says, uh, Mike, love your art and really enjoyed your run on Teen Titans. If given the opportunity, what characters or team would you love to work with uh, on that you haven't had a chance? Would it be a one-shot, a mini-series, or maxi-series? Now, as you said, you're kind of uh, done with interiors. But, mm -hmm. are, I mean, God, you've, you've drawn so many of both the, the pantheons of DC and Marvel. Who's left that you haven't had a chance to work on? You know, I've, I've never drawn Swamp Thing. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, so, so that might be fun. Um, and there are characters that, I mean, you should, I guess you should never say never. So there are characters like Doctor Strange or Silver Surfer who, who might just be too tempting Ooh. To, to say no to. Um, well, I hope that happens, man. God, I, I'm sorry that Mark Wade didn't have a chance to tap you on Doctor Strange with his recent run. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, man. Come on, Wade. What are you doing? Jesus. Um, Wayne Mousseau from Canada. Mike, you've been killing it with your sketches lately. Well, thank you, Wayne. I, uh, Wayne's a good guy. I see him at conventions a lot. Um, he, uh, he's a big art collector, too. So uh, we, we, we have to keep the winds of this world sweet. Indeed. No, I understand, man. No, he is uh, he's a buddy of mine. And, yeah, I, I, I'm well aware of his amazing collection. So that's terrific. And I'm glad he's, uh, he's one of your patrons. I think that's wonderful. So regarding the creator-owned book, mm -hmm. what can you tell us about it? Um. Well, it's it's not a superhero book. It's it's kind of a fantasy. Uh, it's kind of a fairy story, if I had to um, uh, describe it. It's, okay. it's about a, a young person who uh, has to um, finds himself in the position of having to hunt a werewolf and kill it, um, if possible. Uh, so it's called In the Year of the Wolf. And it's it takes place in kind of a, uh, a a medieval snowscape kind of setting. Um, I'm, try, I'm trying not to tell you too much because it's sure. it's, in, it's it's in flux. I, I found that um, even though I, I wrote a pretty thorough outline for it, as I'm drawing it, things are changing. Okay. Um, but but so far, it's a story about a. Uh, a young person who is hunting a werewolf. Wow! But that might change. <laughs> okay. Well, that's cool. And are, and you're writing and drawing it. I, I let's. I'm. I guess I'm, it. I guess I'm writing it. It feels. It feels like I'm just making it up as I go along, um, which might be the best description for for what writing is anyway. Um, but I, I didn't write a full script. Uh, I just plotted it, okay. Um, and when I've when I finished it, which should be, oh my goodness, it would be great to say this year, but I doubt it. Um, when I finish it, I'll dialogue it, and if I'm happy with the dialogue, that's fine. If I'm not, I'll I'll call on one of my my esteemed writer colleagues to come in and, and make some sense of it. <laughs> that's cool. That's excellent, man. Are you? Uh, and forgive me if I'm if I'm you know putting the cart before the horse, but. Uh, are you are you going to crowdfund? Are you, are you are you going to do it that way? Are you going to pitch it? Are you going to do it through image? What are you, what are you thinking in terms of what you want to do creator own wise? If if I could just um, do the creative part of the book and have someone else take care of the rest, uh, that would be great. Uh, sure. I, think, I I know my limitations, and and one of those limitations ends at crowdfunding. Uh, I've got a friend uh, Jim Calafiori, who I mentioned before. Yes. Who is. Um, He's crowdfunding his own his own projects now, and and Jim is great at uh, that kind of stuff. That organi sure. organizational skills that you need to to carry through on that. And I'm just I'm not sure that I have uh, the patience or the uh, the wherewithal to to deal with that side of it. So, Understood. Um, maybe, maybe image. Maybe I'll pitch it to um, to you know one of the. Uh, one of the uh, the bigger publishers on the on the kind of um, the graphic novel side of things. Understood. But I, I haven't really given it that much thought. You know, it's um, I'm not very good at multitasking. Sure, man. Well, no, you're making I'm, the donuts. You don't I'm, know how to sell them yet. You're still making them. Yeah, I'm, I'm terrible at multitasking. So uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd rather do one thing half assedly than six things half assedly. <laughs> Understood. Absolutely. Um, oh, John Beatty is back with a, a technical question. He wants to know uh, as as a, what are you using nerd as a what you are using nerd person. He wants to ask what brush or pen you're using right now to uh, to do the drawing. There, I'm using a Tombow. Uh, it's a Japanese pen, and it's got uh, two nibs. It's got a gray nib and a black nib. But I wow. only use the uh, the black nib. Um, it's waterproof which uh, is important since I'm going to be throwing a little bit of color on this. Um, and this is basically my go-to convention pen. Oh. It's not, um, it's not terribly thin, um, like the, the kind of pen I would use for uh, published work. Sure. Um, but it's got a really nice, soft, flexible nib that I can make a thin line or a thick line. Um, okay, yeah. It, just, it doesn't allow you to get too... Uh, fiddly or too precious with the the 
the, the line work. Well, I got to say, man, your your quick sketch skills are down because, good <laughs> Lord, I mean, you've only been working on this thing for about 10 minutes or so, and it looks fantastic. Um, I mean, God, even just from the angle right now. So, you know, when when you're ready, we'll, we'll reveal. But um, Erica Vale has an interesting question. Oh. Uh, was there ever a poster made of your Star Wars covers? I, I don't think so. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not privy to what goes on um, at Lucasfilm. I don't think mm -hmm. I uh, But I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think there is. Uh, I did have a kind of a loose plan to attend the celebration convention uh, and maybe have the, the, the covers made into a poster for the show. But that was, uh, that was a pre-pandemic plan. That, Understood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the, uh, the whole world changed. <laughs> I understand. Oh, that's funny. John also points out, first of all, he says he hadn't tried, he hasn't tried out that Japanese pen, but he also likes seeing it. We can see it in the background there, your color wheel. More, more people oh, need uh, to use it. Interesting. It's very important. The color wheel um, is an invaluable tool, especially if you're, um, if you're like me and your color theory isn't great. It's it's um it's an invaluable tool to have. Um, one of the I just I just did a lot of uh, um, ninety nine in fact uh, color color busts illustrations, and uh, one of the one of the big problems that I that I had was what color to to make the background. Sure. Of the uh, of the characters, and the easy fix is just to get the color wheel out and uh, see what complementary colors um, will suit the, the characters themselves. And it, it, anything that takes thinking out of the equation, I find works best for me. <laughs> Understood. Tom Marnark, in fact, uh, mentions these headshots you've been doing lately and uh, showing on Instagram. And he'd love to hear what he uses for those colors and how you get those great backgrounds and also says the expressions for each character are so perfect. Well, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, the The colors are kind of a combination of things. I use uh, watercolors primarily and some dyes. So I use the uh, Daniel Smith watercolors and the uh, the uh, Ecoline dyes. With um, I make my own little mixture. Okay, sure. My own little, uh, kind of apothecary uh, style um, <laughs> pots, and um, so I, I use those two. And a little bit of oxgold solution, which helps the uh, the paint stay wet, um, because I, I love how vibrant the dyes are, but they they dry almost immediately. Okay. And the oxgold solution keeps the paints active for a little a little while, so you can blend a little easier. Um, and the expressions, I just you know I I probably uh, I probably. Um, <laughs> I use a mirror. Well, I used to use a mirror. Now I just use my iPad. I turn the camera on and I, I gurn, pull faces <laughs> into that and just kind of draw what I see. So, uh... <laughs> that's you know, I was wondering with the uh, heroes that don't have masks, um, and and really even going back to something like uh, one of your early works in Marvel, The Punisher, and stuff. Were there ever? actor faces or, 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 or faces from your life that you wanted to cast as some of these maskless uh, people? Um, not, not, not really. Um, sometimes I, 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 uh, like recently I did a, um, oh my God, who was it? Adam Strange. I, I painted an Adam Strange bust. Cool. And I was thinking who would have been the best Adam Strange and I thought maybe Cary Grant, not Cary Grant. Who's the um, Gary Cooper? He, he oh, I can see that. Sure. Yeah. Just the, yeah. the, that kind of classically handsome um, uh, pro <laughs> profile. And it's I don't know if it's even the face so much as just the kind of personality that goes along with uh, with with the face. That's interesting because he is angular and also, I mean, and not everyone can wear a fin. Let's be honest on the top of their head. That looked good. <laughs> no, <laughs> Put a no. fin on the Hulk right now and tell me how good he'd look. You know, well, you'd have Savage Dragon, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's true. Good point. All right, Eric Larson, you didn't hear that. Sorry. <laughs> 
but it, really, I'm looking at the Hulk's face, and you kind of see a, a kind of skullish sort of, you know, uh, presence in in your features. But yeah, that's you know, again, I mean, it's clearly the Hulk, but it, it, you know, it's interesting. Like your face is certainly different than what you know Sal Buscema would do, or, or some of the other greats that have uh, that have worked on the Hulk over the years. And I know I've heard you say before that like clearly Kirby is an influence uh, on you. Oh, huge influence. I think even more so now than, than um, when I started drawing comics. I, I, I suspect like a lot of people uh, of, of my generation, uh, Kirby was one of the, um, Kirby was one of the people we saw um, when we were kids, but kind of dismissed because of um flashier artists that came along sure. at the time like burn and, and george perez and, and uh michael golden yeah it, yeah it's only really been with um doing this for a living i guess that that i've gone back and looked at kirby and been able to reappreciate what what he could do um i i don't think comics is always just about simplifying and um kind of extracting the maximum power from the minimum amount of lines but but it's one of the disciplines and and very very few people did that better than than uh, than jack kirby and, and i know that's go on. Without, without considering you know how creative he was sure i i just mean in the actual drawings that, that he produced uh, no i understood and that's one of the reasons why he was able to be so so prolific and and crank out pages because yeah. you know, no line was wasted, and it really was just what what was needed. And uh, man, I, I love going through the uh, Jack Kirby uh, Tomorrow's uh, magazine yeah. and seeing his pencils uh, compared to what Synod or some of his great uh, art, you know anchors did, and everything. It's very interesting, really, really interesting. Yeah, his pencils are, are just beautiful in and of themselves. Absolutely, they look like they were drawn by a drafting machine. Uh, there's, there's like no variation in the tone when he's filling in blacks. Um, it's just just incredible stuff. Um, and I, I'm just are I'm, you I'm always in awe of, of, of Kirby? Um, well, and and he's the kind of guy that um would draw and then you know leave it and move on to the next page. And I wonder with your own art, um, is it hard sometimes to let go of a a panel or, or a page or whatever where, or are, are you, you know, are you disciplined enough to say, okay, it's, it's great. Let's or good enough. Let's move on. How, how did you, did you know, how long did it take before you really felt comfortable, you know, or, or are you comfortable <laughs> moving on? <laughs> I know Mignola, Mignola talks all the time about I'm getting slower and slower because I want to do more. I, so, I you know. certainly identify with that. Uh, I find it very difficult to let go of stuff. Um, someone said that, that comic, it might have been Hitch who said he doesn't finish a page; he just abandons it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty much how I feel. You know, you abandon it when the editor is, uh, is has given you the deadline. I get it, man. Absolutely. Although, you know, it's funny. I've been talking to Hitch very much in the last couple of years, and even he said, "I think he found a solution to uh, to get on with it." And and deadlines come much easier to him. And uh -huh. so, so yeah, whatever whatever epiphany he had. Uh, and I mean, again, to the layman, I, I don't, I don't see the difference. I mean, it's it's Brian Hitch doing his thing. I mean, it looks great, you know. Well, I I did a, an Avengers graphic novel a few years ago. I wanted to talk about that, please. And it, the the deadline was absolutely insane. It was a I think one hundred and twelve or one hundred and twenty pages, and it was it was just insane. And uh, I was getting really, really frustrated about being able to. To, to maintain the quality, or at least the quality that, that I'm capable of um, in the book. And um, Tom Brevoort, who was editing it, said, you know, everyone who reads this book is probably going to spend like three minutes on each page. <laughs> they, they're going to spend probably 30 seconds on each panel. So not, not every single hand you draw or every single you know background you draw has to be the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel or or a, a <laughs> pure work of art in and of itself. And I think certainly when you're drawing interiors, it's 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 easy to get obsessed with making everything absolutely perfect. Because we 
you know, there are certain artists that we look at and like Kevin Nolan, who, who just has this incredible uh, uh, consistent level of quality in everything he does. And it's probably a mistake to try and apply that on a monthly book <laughs> sure, or, or any, any kind of lengthy interiors. Um, and when I, when I look back now at the, the books I loved when I was a kid or a young adult, very few of them would, would, you know, be judged um, as impeccable uh, works of art. Uh, it was really the stories and uh, the kind of visceral energy that, that um, the artists will manage to, to, to lay down on a page. Understood. Is, is the Hulk ready? Are you, are you set or I see, cause I see you picking up the brush back up again. So these are, uh, I don't know. If it's a so this, look at that. This is um, outstanding. Been inked, and I've painted the uh, uh, the shadows and the undercolor, and now I just have to put on some green. Otherwise, we've just got a blue and white Hulk. <laughs> which I'm, I'm sure at some point there will be a blue Hulk if there hasn't been already. I was going to say, or you could go gray, and it could be Joe Fixit, of course. So yes, <laughs> yeah, I could do that. I, I, I mixed the paints already, and I'm, I'm so cheap. I don't want to waste this green. No problem, man. It's all right. <laughs> I don't mean to art direct. I apologize. That's great. That's, man. that's okay. That's okay. This, Jeez. Is, this is your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also we want to remind people to go to tdartgallery.com because you can enter to win this very Hulk piece that is being uh, colored as we speak. That's great. Oh, it looks so fantastic, man. That's a great, that's a beautiful green. That's wonderful. <laughs> I'm very honestly, man, no, seriously, it is always when I go to conventions and I know all the fans feel the same way. It is such a pleasure to watching you guys create in front of us. And it really is like it's a singular performance. I, I prefer getting commissions rather than pages of art. And I love the pages of art that I've gotten. And I'm sure all the collectors feel the same way. But for me, it's like this is like a solo performance. You know, I mean, it's like, oh, hey, look at that. James Taylor's singing a song for me. This is great. You know, to pick yeah. an artist out of my butt. But, yeah, I mean, so really, it's always fun watching this. So uh, it's just amazing. So, yeah, everybody, go to tdartgallery.com, and you can sign up for uh, for Mike's newsletter and uh, announcements, and he's got original art there and commissions as well. But also, if you sign up and register, uh, you may win this very Hulk piece that uh, Mike is creating before. It's pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm still so shocked. tdart.com. James Taylor. <laughs> it's kind of showing my age, man. What can I say? I won't deny I, it. Believe me, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I, I have no James Taylor hit whatsoever. <laughs> Chris Frederick says, "Mike, of the ninety-nine characters you just did watercolor bus for, which character interests you most when considering their backstory or history?" By the way, I love your Judge Red two thousand AD full color illustration at TDR. That's cool. Oh. Um, the back history. Oh my! So goodness. yeah, I guess yeah. I mean, essentially, what character? Yeah, that you drew of those ninety nine that you really you know love in particular. Well, probably the Kirby ones. Probably, um, you know, I was a Marvel kid. Okay. And where I lived in when I grew up in England was um, was just Marvel country. You you couldn't buy a DC comic for love no money. Uh, they weren't distributed there. So I didn't come to DC Comics until, um, I guess Perez was on Teen Titans, and I had found a comic book store uh, in Newcastle. Uh, so, so my kind of primal love is for, for those early Marvel characters. Um, but I, of all the characters that I drew, I guess I'd have to say, I did a David Bowie painting. Oh, wow. Uh, so he, he, he was quite a character, I guess. Yeah, he can. Oh, absolutely. What are you talking about? Ziggy Stardust, for God's sake. Yeah. That's fantastic. What uh what kind of yeah, what what uh what album cover or whatever inspired your Bowie uh Well I did a, I cheated a little bit. I used uh I used photo reference from his kind of uh let's dance sure uh, in white duke days. Yes indeed. I gave him the life on Mars haircut. Oh uh, wow, fun the, the the blue suit, which uh <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do the kind of Dia Berlin. Uh, day, oh, sure. Yeah. With, uh, him and Eno sitting on the Berlin Wall. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. And recording heroes. My God. Oh, oh the Lord. best. Oh, my God. 
the so, best. Oh. You're um, killing me, Mike. Honestly, this is fantastic. I mean, right now you're hitting my high school uh, music <laughs> music taste. So that's fantastic. And they, they're still with me. So well, I've been going through them, I mean, um, uh, like every pretentious uh, <laughs> aging hipster, um, I've been buying vinyl. And uh, so I've been going back through uh, the boy catalog and just those three albums he made in Germany are just, I would never have thought it when I was a teenager, but they're my favorites. I think I, I think. understand, man. No, I totally get it. And and got all these great Bowie documentaries that have come out in the last couple of years. And you know, I was working at an album rock station when Black Star came out, uh -huh. and I was so angry that we weren't playing it. Yeah. And there and and the argument was, well, we're a classic rock station, and I'm like, yeah, and it's <laughs> David Bowie. I'm like, what are you doing, man? And yeah. then he died, if you know, just a couple of weeks after the damn thing was released. And yeah. oh, what a what a Paul. That month, that, uh, not to not to bring us down, not to bring the broadcast down, but yeah, man, I you know if we could be, spend a second on Bowie for a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know what what a way to curate your own your own death. I mean, yeah, <laughs> no kidding, man. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Went out, went out doing what he wanted to do and everything. Died with his literally the cowboy, uh, you know, parallel. Died with his boots on. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I think Black Star is one of his strongest albums. Totally. Good Lord, yes. I completely agree. Well, we're looking at an incredibly strong, unbelievable commission that uh, the Mike McCone has given up uh, for a giveaway. We're, al we're almost at the top of the hour, so uh, I just want to point that out again, that it's uh, – uh, okay, yeah, they're, they're telling me uh, probably go another two minutes or, so, or actually about eh, – just about a minute, Mike, now that I think of it. I want to see if there were any other uh, questions. Um that we haven't already hit. Um, Chris Bailey did say he was proud uh, that uh, he owns more than a few of your works. A Lobo Splash from Legion, a recreation of Endless Wartime, as we mentioned earlier, and uh, just got your new Werewolf by Night cover. That's awesome. Chris Bailey, everybody. Well, pretty hey, cool. I appreciate it. That's, um, it's, it's, it's nice to hear. Uh, I, Very I, cool. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to... Throw some backgrounds. I'll tidy this up once we're. Uh... Oh, dude, yeah, you don't have to rush. It's all right. <laughs> Honestly, look, uh, yeah, and exactly, we're getting a good sense of what people could win if they go to tdart.com. Look at that. That's fantastic, Mike. Mike, it has been such a pleasure watching you make this. Well, thank and, you. And 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 truly, I hope you'll come back and uh, and do a, a word balloon podcast. I'm I'm here helping out uh, Bill and Comic Art Live, and uh, we'll be doing it again tomorrow with a couple more panels myself mm -hmm. at the top of the hour. Uh, we're moving on to more creators. There you are. Absolutely, man. <laughs> but uh, seriously, well done. And, and really a, a true pleasure watching you work and make this happen. But let's, uh, let's set up a new, a uh, new talk uh, soon when you're ready with your creator own stuff. Absolutely. But even before that, if you want to hang out and chat. Sure. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's been fun. Thanks. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for covering up all, all of the, uh, the, the dead air that I provided. <laughs> Not at all. Hey, man, you're like I said, man, what are you talking about? I can't draw and handle a conversation. <laughs> Most of us watching can't do that. You did great. Well, um, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Mike McCone, everybody. How about it? That was just outstanding. And go to tdart.com and sign up for Mike's uh, newsletter and, and all the rest. And uh, maybe you'll uh, have the opportunity to, uh, to win that lovely Hulk piece. Yes. Thank you, Mike. It's tdartgallery.com. Thank you, tdartgallery.com. <laughs> thank you very much, all. No, and, so, and it's right there on the crawl, right, right below us. So there we go. Absolutely. So yeah, thanks, Mike. Sorry for giving you the bad link earlier. I do appreciate it, <laughs> no John. Worries. Yeah, and John, you're fantastic. Thank you so much, and thanks for everybody for tuning in. Uh, the next panel starts in just a couple minutes. And uh, again, I appreciate everything. Take care, guys. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, thanks man.